Well, good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome on this summer's morning to our worship. I hope you've been able to stay cool and calm and collected over the past few days of heat and been able to enjoy some time in the shade and maybe the odd ice cream or two. Thank you, Ian, for that really beautiful uh, piece of Mozart that we just heard. It will be repeated again at the end of the service if you would like to enjoy it again. So we continue to gather together in our own homes, but united in the love of God and in his presence with us today. The order of service is available on the website and has been sent out by email. So please feel free to join in with as much or as little as you like um, and just to enjoy uh, or sit back and just enjoy the words and the music and let them speak to you of God's love for you this morning. So our first hymn, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. From our order of service, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. So let's pause before God and bring before him those things that we need to lay down. We pray together. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing God's praise in the Gloria. Let's pray. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glory's sake. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hazel is going to read to us from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased 
and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Come to the water today, not Galilee, sadly, but Southampton water. Bonus prizes are available for anyone who spots someone walking on the water behind me today. It's a lovely day today too. But the weather was not so kind that night to the disciples. Probably exhausted after a busy day feeding 5,000 people sent across the lake by Jesus who said he'd catch up. It wasn't easy sailing. A strong wind was against them and the waves were high. Jesus does catch up with the disciples in the boat, walking out to them there. And for these fishermen, it was the sight of Jesus and the water that made them afraid, not the storm itself. The story begins with the disciples in fear and ends with them in worship. So what is it that changes for them? Matthew's first Jewish readers would not have been left in any doubt. Jesus walking on water just after he had fed so many in the wilderness. It has so many echoes of Israel's story. The God of Israel commands the waters in Genesis to enable creation, in Exodus to enable salvation. And Jesus, when he says, it is I, do not be afraid, he uses the very words that are used to translate the Hebrew name of God revealed to Moses at the burning bush. The provision of food in the wilderness, the command of the waters, using the divine name. Jesus is not being at all subtle about revealing who he is. And Peter recognises something of this and does something extraordinary. He takes a huge risk. But trusting Jesus, he knows that if it is Jesus, he'll be safe to step out of the boat and onto the water. And so Jesus invites him into that risk. Come, he says, and Peter joins Jesus on the waves until perhaps he is overwhelmed or distracted and his trust in Jesus is replaced by fear and he begins to sink. But Jesus is there to save him, to save him from the waves and to get him back to the others in the safety of the boat in a now calm sea. And in that place of calm for everyone, all of the disciples grow in understanding too. And so they worship Jesus as the Son of God. So what had changed for them to lead them from fear to worship? Well, it was Peter's faith in Jesus as the one with power to save. Peter's willingness to take a risk and the response of Jesus, who does save Peter and the rest of them too, all the while revealing himself as the Son of God. I like to imagine Jesus, you know, laughing gently at Peter. Why did you doubt? Look what you've already done through your faith in me. You walked on the water. Your little faith in me has done something amazing. And not only for you, it led to the rest of them. It led the rest of them in the boat from fear to worship. That is the transformation that even a little faith and a willingness to take a risk can make. So much of what we face today feels risky. We are rightly not prepared to take risks with our health or that of others. There is much that causes us to be afraid. 
It's interesting, I think, that one of the phrases of lockdown has been, we're not all in the same boat, but we are all in the same storm. It's a tumultuous time. But this means, I think, that it is time for people of faith to take a risk or two, trusting in Jesus. Are we called to stay huddled in the boat in fear? Or are we willing to know Jesus truly as the one who has the power to save? To save us as individuals, but also our communities, even our churches. It only takes perhaps one or two disciples to have enough faith to take a risk that inspires the rest of us so that we might be able to turn from fear to worship. Peter may only have had a little faith, but he got out of the boat. We're going to be taking risks in our church life together. You know, it was a risk to close our buildings and move to worshipping together online. It's another risk to move back into our buildings for at least some of us. What about those who cannot be there? It will continue to be risky as we have to discover new ways of being disciples of Jesus and serving our community and all of God's people in different ways. As we'll have to live in the COVID storm a little while longer. We pray to be a bit more like Peter, with enough faith to get out of the boat, trusting that Jesus really is God and really has power to save taking the transformative risk that leads others to worship him too. So there was no one walking on Southampton water yesterday and I stayed firmly on dry land. But let us do as Peter did and declare our faith in Jesus as the son of the God of Israel, the one with the power to save and transform. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sammy Jordan, our licensed lay worker in the parish, will lead us in our prayers for others. Good morning. In our prayers today, we're going to use the letters P-R-A-Y to help us pray. P to pause, R to reflect, A to ask, and Y to yield. I'll introduce each section, but also leave a pause for you to add your own prayers. At the end of each section, I'll say, Lord, hear us. And if you'd like to respond, Lord, graciously hear us, that would be great. So let us pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We're going to start by pausing and being still. We're going to remind ourselves that we are in God's presence and focus on him as Peter had to do in our reading just now. Now 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Now we're going to reflect and give thanks for who God is. So Father, thank you that you are with us right now. We might not be together in a church building, but you meet with each and every one of us. Thank you that you are faithful, that you supply all of our needs. In our reading this morning, you had just miraculously fed the people with loaves and fishes. So you'd met their physical needs and then you go on to meet their emotional needs when they're fearful and scared. Thank you that however we are feeling, whatever we are facing, you are almighty, you are all powerful, that nothing is impossible for you. Thank you that you are with us in the storms of life. You are our rock who never leaves us. Perhaps take a moment to thank God for his goodness to you this morning. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And now we ask on behalf of ourselves and others. I wonder if you can think of people and situations a bit like the boat in our reading, far from shore, battered by the waves and with the wind against it. Father, we bring to you situations which feel out of control and might leave us feeling fearful and overwhelmed. We pray for the countries around the world, battered by waves of chaos, war, injustice and disaster. And this morning we especially pray for Lebanon and the city of Beirut. Thank you for the generous international response to the port disaster. Please bring comfort to those who mourn a new unity and peace to Lebanon. We also pray for the impact of COVID-19 on our world, for those living in fear of the virus, for those perhaps living in lockdown and locked in lockdown, afraid to go out. Please bring peace and set people free from fear. Please continue to come alongside those who feel lonely and isolated. For those who feel adrift in the boat, fearful of the future because it's so uncertain and hard to plan. Thank you that our hope is in you. Please restore hope to our world, Lord Jesus. For those who are fearful and have had their lives rocked by the virus because they've lost their jobs or been on furlough, please be their anchor. We pray especially for our cleaner Eileen as she returns to work and helps to prepare our buildings to reopen. Thank you that your word says that if any of us lack wisdom, we should ask for it. And so we ask for it now on behalf of our leaders, scientists and doctors, all those tasked with finding a resolution to COVID-19. We pray for families who are fearful of September as schools reopen. Father, please restore some normality to people's lives. We pray too for the church around the world Please give wisdom to the people making decisions about how to worship safely. And especially this morning, we pray for our Burma Link Bishop Mark Mwangdo and the team as they lead the diocese there in difficult times. Lord of the church, we trust that even in this storm, you are inviting your church to come and working your purposes out. We pray for all those who are sick, Father, we pray especially today for Kelly, Kevin, baby Lucy, for Marina, Tom and Peter, for Heather, Roger, Beryl and Andrew, for Luke, Rogelio, John, Vicky, Christopher and Yvonne. Please bring your healing and wholeness to their lives. We pray for those who have died and those who mourn their loss. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Please, please bring your comfort and surround them with your love. And we especially pray for Mickey Curtis and all those we know who have died recently or whose anniversary falls at this time. Maybe take a moment to bring to God now the people and places you want to ask him for this morning.
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And now why we yield to God's will. I was struck in the reading that it doesn't say that the storm stopped and then Jesus asked Peter to get out of the boat to come. Jesus invited Peter to come probably whilst the storm still raged. So afraid and uncertain, he stepped out anyway. As we yield to God's will, are there situations where we need to step out of the boat? What's God asking of us? Where do we hear the invitation to come, but are perhaps held back by fear? Where have we got to do it anyway? If we want to walk on water, we have to get out of the boat. When Peter focused on Jesus, he was fine. When he focused on the storm, he started to sink. Father, when we are feeling battered, in a storm and afraid, help us to focus on you. Help us to remember whose we are, not just where we are and what is going on. The things that often consume us and make us feel like we're drowning. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Amen. Thank you, Sammy, for those prayers. We can continue in prayer and in fellowship with one another as we share God's peace together. Uh, if you'd like to write in the comments and share in God's peace, then please do do that. God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. 
From them, you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in he earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Let's pray. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you as ever to everyone who helped uh, contribute to our worship this morning. A special thanks to Nathan and Cora and Daphne and Timothy who uh, led the choir so beautifully in our anthem there. So this week's notices, well we're very excited that we have uh, planned some services in church buildings uh, next week at All Saints at eight o'clock in the morning. Now we're starting smaller and learning as we go along. Um, and so the numbers are restricted at All Saints, but we do hope within uh, three weeks or so to have moved to St. Michael's so we can fit more people in. So please be patient with us, um, but I hope that those who wish to worship and receive communion next Sunday at All Saints, will be able to do that. Uh, you, we would like you to book in advance and there's a link in the news sheet to be able to book tickets. That's live from tomorrow morning, so don't book now, it won't work. Or you can call or email the parish office and uh, they will uh, reserve a seat for you. Um, please bear with us as we try to get things right and keep everyone safe and um, this is something I never thought I'd have to say but please do bring a, a face covering with you and uh, if you wish to receive communion um, would you also please bring your uh, a personal supply of hand sanitizer for you to use in your seat that would be really helpful. So I'm on retreat next week. I really would value your prayers for that. Um, but also as I begin a new role as the area dean of Southampton, just beginning to work out what that might mean. Um, and uh, please pray for uh, good colleagues to um, agree to be assistant area deans alongside me in this role. Now we have reopened our electoral roll ready for the APCM, which we hope to hold on the 13th of September. Um, it might be held online or it might be held in person. We're still waiting for guidance from the diocese to know best how to do that. So uh, please uh, watch this space. But in the meantime, if you're not already on the electoral roll and you would like to join, then please contact the office and they will take the necessary steps to make that happen. So I think that's everything for this week. It's really lovely, lovely to have you with me and Andrew here in the dining room. Um, thank you for your encouragement and for your um, comments through this. But let's go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.